Hello everyone and welcome to another School of Send track guide. I'm Callan O'Keefe, British and Vice World Champion Racing Driver and also founder of School of Send Drive Development. And today I get to take you through one of my absolute all-time favourite circuits, the circuit Autodromo Internazionale di Monza. And what a great challenge the Formula 1 drivers have ahead of them this weekend. Again, a circuit that I've raced on multiple times. A place that's never really been kind to me. Uh, break, break issues for Callan especially, but uh... still one that I love nonetheless. It always creates high octane racing and is a real unique driver's challenge because of the fact that the cars are running on such low downforce through such high speed corners, especially in the second and third sector. We're going to be going corner by corner and giving you an in depth guide into how to nail this circuit for your own driving, be it in real life or on the sim or just for a general interest point of view. So, without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> So what makes Monza such a unique challenge compared to other circuits? Well, I sort of touched on it a little bit when I spoke about the cars running in low downforce configuration. And what that means for the drivers is the fact that they have to completely change their driving style. They're just not going to have that same level of grip, compliance and adhesion that they're used to at a high downforce circuit like Zandvoort. So when the drivers rock up on Friday morning, the cars are going to feel completely different to what they're used to. Couple that with the fact that on these Pirelli tyres, they don't really get many shots at the feeling where the cars are the absolute limit. It makes it a very unique challenge from a driving perspective because they have to literally alter their entire driving style because this low downforce setup means that it affects the entire cornering phase. It affects the way that they apply the brake pedals. It affects the way that they rotate the car and how they're able to rotate the car and also the way that they're allowed to get back on power for maximum efficient traction. So you're going to see the drivers that adapt the fastest being the ones that get to the limit the quickest at Monza. And equally, a nervous, skittish, low downforce car doesn't give you a load of confidence to push in the high speed corners like the Variante Ascari. And that's why we see so many incidents over the course of the years at Monza, because it is a very, very difficult place to get the absolute maximum out of the car. And we do tend to see very, very close qualifiers and close races here. So you can't leave any time on the table here at all. That's really, really important. The second thing is the fact that obviously we tend to see amazing races here. It's very, very easy or not very easy, but it is possible to overtake in every corner. And in most of them, you can do it on the inside and the outside. So you've got plenty of options. So drivers need to be intuitive, adaptive and inventive in order to find ways to pass and equal, equally keep people behind. Because uh, yeah, over the years, we've seen almost every single possible pass, even cars on the grass. If you remember Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso back a few years ago. And so, you know, in order to hold position and get from the start to the finish in the shortest period possible, which is the job of any racing driver, breaking it down to its simplest terms, it's very, very, very easy to get caught up in a fight and lose unnecessary time and wear your tires out unnecessarily here. So it's a real driver's challenge. And those are the two key things that we don't necessarily see at other tracks that make Monza so unique and so difficult. What about in terms of driving? Well, we like to break down the circuit into two or three key characteristics that drivers can focus on when they arrive. That's what we do with the drivers we coach on the sim and in real life. And with Monza, our key focus really is getting your braking absolutely nailed, getting comfortable and confident with where the limit of braking is and focusing on strong, efficient exit. Those are the two things to focus on to start with because that is will get you somewhere near the pace very, very quickly because the amount of time you spend actually in the corners is fairly insignificant compared to the amount of time you spend flat out on the straights. So focusing on getting the braking right That'll get the car rotated in the correct way, which will mean that you can get back on power nice and efficiently and carry a nice strong exit and not lose out on any time and hopefully make up time compared to the people you're racing against. The third thing, once you've gotten an absolute handle on that, is to focus on your line discipline and your minimum speed. And that's that's two different areas for two different places so your line discipline we're talking about line discipline in the first chicane line discipline in the second chicane not exiting too wide in between and pushing too much and compromising your exit and your line discipline in the lesmos making sure to hold the car at the correct point where visual reference is very very difficult to find and equally the cars trying to go away from you because it's a medium to high speed corner with very low downforce but we'll talk more about that when we get there let's focus for now on turn one so as we arrive into turn one you can see plenty of marker boards on the left hand side to help you with your braking and one of the key things that we do to help ourselves adapt to monza 
is you focus on braking in a straight line and keeping the car straight for as long as you possibly can. Therefore, you're devoting all of that mechanical grip to just slowing the car down. And equally, you're helping set yourself up for a better exit by allowing yourself to keep the car more over to the right hand side and allowing you to have the correct line discipline because that line discipline is so key. And you've got this nice reference point on the left hand side here. That strip of tarmac really acts as a nice marker point. You want to stay over to that for as long as you possibly can till just before the end of it, before you dive in and use as much curb on the right hand side as you can get away with. And you can see here, this is the absolute perfect exit position here. You've got the car still turned over to the right hand side. You've exited no wider than mid track. And that allows you to dive into the second part of this first chicane and pick up the throttle nice and aggressively using all of the curb on exit. In real life, it's very, it's a very, very bumpy exit. The exit curbs here do tend to be very, very aggressive. So you either have to hit them with completely straight steering, go over them to these green strips of tarmac you see, or not use them at all. That depends on how traction limited you are. The other thing that's really, really important to focus on is just like we struggle with the braking, we want to keep everything as straight as we possibly can. It's all about rotating the car as fast and efficient as possible and on power, getting off that steering lock, take the lock out the car so that the tires are just focusing on accelerating and propelling you out of the corner. And that is the best way to avoid traction issues here on this low downforce configuration. Hopefully with a good exit out of turn one now, it's just about taking the least amount of meters and the least amount of resistance as you possibly can through Curva Grande. Again, flat out in most cars, even in the rain, it's not really a corner. You almost just wanna think your way through here. Make sure to have nice, crisp, solid upshifts as well, using all the RPM available to you and uh, maximizing your straight line speed because you don't want to give away any unnecessary lap time here. We arrive now into the second chicane and again we've got plenty of visual reference points and we are focusing on exactly the same thing again. Strong, efficient straight line braking, good line discipline and clean efficient throttle pickup in between the two. And once again you've got this nice reference on the outside here that keeps you over to the right hand side. It's so easy to creep in and creeping in here will really compromise your line in between the two which will close off your exit. So make sure to have the discipline to keep yourself over to the right hand side before diving in and taking as much curb as you can on the left. And here you really wanna hold the car depending on how much power you've got. The more powerful the car, the more you wanna hold the car over to the left because this curb that you want to get near or use is very, very bumpy. And then on exit, we find here a really aggressive curb that has big bumps and you can see the car moving which really affects the car on traction so it's all again about rotating the car from the correct place in between the two and picking up the throttle as smoothly and efficiently as you possibly can avoiding wheel spin or big snaps of oversteer now in terms of general feeling when you're out on track the way how you know you've gotten that corner right is if you find yourself throttling loads in between the two chicanes that's your body's way of telling you that you need to or your mind's way of telling you you need to brake later carry a bit more entry speed your body's trying to compensate because it feels like it's going too slow if you feel yourself just using a little bit of throttle lifting and releasing and everything turning nicely but everything's still calm and under control then you know you've gotten your braking 100 percent dialed in and looking further on in the corner if you know that you can pick up the throttle at that second apex cleanly and efficiently you know that you're in the right direction in the right ballpark for whichever car or tire and mileage you're currently driving with but really really focus on those reference points and dialing into because that's so so important in understanding where you can potentially find lap time or where you can potentially gain it on others if you do it perfectly so now we arrive at the first real medium or high speed corner of the circuit and you can see there's not a great deal to go off of here in terms of reference points and also looking through the corner to be able to see your exit you can't even really see your apex. Your apex is a service road on the inside of that curb, which you only can see after you've turned in. But one of the things we do have here that really helps us out is camber. You can see the banking all the way to the apex here, which means that we can be really smooth with the brake. We don't need to upset the car by overslowing it. We can keep the aero platform nice and neutral and not manipulate too much rotation. We can rely on doing that with the steering. And again, as I said, we really want to focus on early progressive throttle pickup for your minimum speed. The exit for this straight isn't so important. It's all about making sure that you carry good minimum speed. The car is nice and well balanced and we hold the line all the way into the apex and keeping ourselves inside of the camber to allow you to avoid any unnecessary snaps or potential trips to the barrier on the inside there. Oh, Lewis Hamilton's had a spin! <laughs> so moving swiftly on, as we now go to the second Lesmo, 
Now it's changed once again because we really want to focus on our exit because the run down to the second Ascari, very, very long and again to an overtaking opportunity. So we're, most cars will break somewhere near the 50 meter board. And once again, it's all about keeping the car over to the left hand side, rotating the car on a knife edge and then tucking the car into this camber and picking the throttle up really, really aggressively about here and just trusting and driving through that understeer you're going to get and using all of the track on exits. Some cars, GTs especially, they can use the curbs here. Single seaters definitely stay away from them. You just want your wheels in between the line and the curb. That's the absolute sweet spot here in Monza for your single seater cars. And again, using all of the track on exit that you can get away with, with track limits. Hopefully with a good exit out of there, you're driving down the straight now. Again, all about being super smooth, focusing on your upshifts as we arrive at the last combination section on the circuit and the second last corner, the Variante Ascari. Now again, the scene of lots of controversy, lots of drama and also a big crash for Kimi Raikkonen a few years ago. A big bump on the braking zone round about the 100 meters makes it very, very tricky here because you get caught between braking just before the bump or after it, depending on what category of car you're in. But again, we want to focus just like those first two chicanes. We want to focus on strong, efficient braking, good line discipline and early efficient throttle pickup. And one of the things that's more challenging with this section is the fact that it's such a long corner and it is more high speed. So you don't have that aero compliance, that aero grip that you're used to at other circuits. So you have to really feather the throttle and be very delicate with your steering movements because two aggressive movements here can lead to big snaps of oversteer and potentially either big spins or big crashes. As a general reference point, somewhere in between 150 is going to be your braking. And then you're looking at, again, holding it to halfway through this outside curb and diving in. And your curb usage here, again, is critical. You want to use as much of this curb to the big sausages as you can get away with to cut the line and allow you to keep yourself no more than one car's width to the outside here. If you find yourself running all over that exit curb, it's going to compromise you and mean that you have to lift in the second part of the chicane, which will hurt you all the way down to Parabolica. We want to dive back in just after those second bollards and prepare this this left hander it's not easily flat again using just under that curb and using all of the track on exit parabolica is one of the most challenging corners on the circuit because a it sets you up for your lap and b it leads to your overtaking zone at turn one. And again, you're faced with a very, very high speed banked corner with very, very, very little grip. And here the breaking point is super, super late. Now, we tend to use somewhere in between 100-ish, depending on your car, 80 to 50, and 50 is gonna be the absolute latest you'll ever break in a car. Um, but the key thing again is you're sat here and you have no visual reference for where your apex is. Your apex is absolutely miles away. So one of the tricks that we use with our drivers is you're looking for that photography tower where the photographers all often stand. You see those great panning shots of them going to the apex. That's where you're looking to apex and it gives you something to aim for in the future. And that first apex here is so, so important because you open up and run wide minimum to exit and you really, really want to avoid going too wide here because it's really easy to get your lap canceled for track limits or potentially end up with a drive through, something like that in a race if you violate it too much or you have to back out of it and you get a terrible exit. The brake shape here is also a little bit different. It's more similar to your braking at Lesmo 1. It's a high efficient peak and then a very aggressive bleed off because you do have to enter with so much entry speed that you can't just dump off the, the brake really aggressively. You have to almost feed the brake pedal in and hold it all the way to the apex to give you that rotation because you don't have the natural aero grip and compliance. Your apex point, as we said, is somewhere around about here with this photography post and you want to hold that for as long as you can get away with. It'll normally be somewhere around here. The car will naturally just start to drift out and you can leave the camber nice and organically before running as wide as you can get away with or before you lose traction and uh, finishing the lap nice and strongly onto another race lap, hopefully getting you away from other cars or uh, closing them in or onto the end of the perfect quali lap. If you are on a quali lap, make sure to take the absolute shortest distance to the line. You don't want to be taking any more meters than is absolutely necessary here. And that is how you do a perfect lap at Monza. As we've said, so many overtaking opportunities, so little downforce, a proper unique driver's challenge. 
and I for one am really really excited to see 20 of the best drivers in the world race to the absolute limit there this weekend but uh, if you like this video please give us a like and uh, a comment as well and tune in for more track guys in the future but until next time I've been Callum O'Keefe and uh, looking forward to seeing you again soon.